how long would it take you to, let's say, train Jason Statham to move like you? I thought, what? I thought me. I thought I, thought I was. <laughs> like, where are the... <laughs> oh, teach him. I thought I was going to be the Statham. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be. <laughs> Hey guys, got a pretty exciting video for you today. I think this isn't exclusive. I don't think this is really told anywhere else. My guest, George Pogacic, the Russian martial art hall of famer. I like to call him the martial arts wizard, but anyway, he's going to tell us about this project that he was, uh, could have had a pretty good involvement in had it actually gotten made. It was a film that was going to feature Sistema, like a real Hollywood film with a real budget, and uh, it was potentially going to start Jason Statham. So we got the whole story on how Pogacic got involved in it, basically what it was going to be about and then how it all kind of fell apart unfortunately but who knows maybe this could still get made someday and if you like this kind of content please help support the channel by hitting the like button subscribing sharing the video uh check out george on youtube by the way if you want to see some cool systemic videos i'll link that in the description below and uh one more thing if you want to smell amazing black bell fragrances i could get you a discount on cologne and perfume linked in the description below you find that info and with that said let's get on to this discussion Let's transition into Jimmy Six. Okay, so first of all, can you like give us a little summary on this movie called Jimmy Six? Apparently, it was going to be uh, Sistema based, where I guess they were going to introduce Sistema as like, you know, like a new martial arts, at least new for Hollywood films, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, started, in fact, when I was talking about the Wesley Snipes film right after I got done filming that. Yeah. The very next day, Rick Rosenthal and his whole film crew come over to visit me in my garage where I train. Now, real quick, is this because of something you said to somebody during the Wesley Snipes film? Or is that just coincidental? That's just coincidental. Oh, okay. That's weird. I still had makeup on my face and stuff like that the Rick, next day. Oh, that's funny. And if you look at that video, you'll see that I had something because it was Halloween. Well, how did they know you were the Sistema expert, though? Because my friend Dan Casey, uh, who's right now uh, doing uh, writing, I think one of the uh, yeah he he wrote the last Fast and the Furious movie. I think so, the last one of the yeah, which is pretty I, awesome. You have to look it up to find out which it is. I, I'm not watching those, but I I hear back every once in a while about what he's doing up there. Sure, sure. But you know, I've known him since he was fresh out of high school. Okay, we, you guys go way we, back. Yeah, yeah, we we made all kinds of uh, you know films here and ended up in the Sun Sundance Slam Dance Film Festival and took second place and everything. That's cool. He got his master's degree at AFI in directing. Nice. And then really made something of himself. But uh, he would um, he was a guy, and I'll tell you, would never talk about his production or what he was doing until it was all done. And then he'd say okay, here's the script, here's a screenplay. And you're like, wow, I, well, I didn't know you wrote that. How come you didn't tell me you were writing anything? It's always, he always had this thing of, because if stuff don't materialize, mm. you, look bad. <laughs> you look bad. So, so. Um, oh, that's interesting. Okay. He, I, I could, I could see that. He stood firm on that. He was unwavering in that. It was always, he was very consistent. He would wait, he would write something. And then when it's time, he's going to tell you. And so the time he told me, was after he wrote all this and he everything everything he writes about what he knows about uh, as, yeah as any writer should you know definitely and he was intrigued from the beginning because you have to remember when i met him he was out of high school you know and i was this older guy in the whole group of kids that were well, so was, was he your student then in martial arts no no he was my mentor in filmmaking he was well, a, he was he, your Wait, you met him when he just got out of high school? Yes, because I was, remember I got kicked in that uh, Peter Malota thing, the end of the line, that trailer? Yeah, you just got jump kicked, blasted by, by Peter Malota. Yeah. Okay, so, and I think this was related to how you met Dan Casey? Yeah, that's right. And, uh, God, that was like uh, 1998, maybe? Okay. Or 1999 or something like that. Maybe 2000. So I met Dan Casey uh, because the stunt guy on end of the line, the one who asked me, hey, is it okay if he kicks you? Sure. Um, after it was over, you know, it's kind of like you're, you're sorry to see it end. 
when you make a movie, you know, it's like, yeah, uh, sure. It's like, can, can we write? Can we, how do we stay in contact? You know, it's, it's kind of like, Oh, we're, we all have to leave now. It's like, it's like a marriage and stuff. It's being dissolved. And, stuff. <laughs> and, and so um, they say, Hey, don't worry. He says, I have another production. And I got, I'll talk to the guys and see if we could bring you aboard. Okay. And so that's, that's how that was. And uh, I came over there and it was in someone's backyard and they had smoke and fog, all kinds of stuff for this horror film. And I seen Dan Casey like off and on all the time, but I didn't know that was him. I saw his movies and I was like amazed at some of the productions he did with just a, a camera. Well, where, where'd you see his movies? Like they, how were they distributed or? It's a guy that I knew. It was just floating around, you know, and if you were into independent filmmaking, mm, okay. yeah, that's going to show you from this guy and that guy. And then you're like, oh, who is this guy? I need to see who this guy is. Yeah. So you weren't finding him at Blockbuster video or anything. Oh. Okay. People would show me, you know, and I'm like, this looks like a black, but this looks like a film. Who's who did this? I want to know who did it, who made regular digital video look so good. Yeah. And uh, this is amazing. Then I would go to uh, uh, some, you know, local gig. And there's this kid, this tall, skinny kid. I used to get aggravated because I've seen him all the time. I, go, <laughs> I, bet that, I bet that kid doesn't even know how to work a camera. Yeah, sure. He's got a camera there and he just doesn't look but he, he's part of, he had a job, Real Detroit or some kind of, you know, he was everywhere. And I just got tired of seeing him. And then I'd go home and I'd so but who, look at this movie that, you know, whoever did that is great. Because a friend of mine showed me some local independent film stuff, you know? Yeah. So I didn't know that that, that was his. I didn't know. And then so after End of the Line that with Peter Malota, they brought me over there. Because I like George, Dan Casey, and I flipped. I couldn't believe that that was him. Uh, that was the guy that was doing this brilliant movie, that this kid was that brilliant. And he was more or less straight out of high school at the time. Yeah, yeah That's he crazy. Was, he was, and he was so smart how he could write screenplays about all this different subject matter. And he had people that were 60 years old, 50 years old, and he just directed the whole thing. Wow. I mean, he directed everybody on everything. I mean, he, and it, it wasn't like you were dealing with somebody that was um, a kid. There's mm -hmm. no way. He was ahead of you. Wow. That's <laughs> I, was, I was 32. I got to ask him for answers. Interesting. You know, or he, he knew, the guy knew, he was one of them exceptional people. He's going to wow. see this. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. And, um, but uh, I just, I just remember after that, um, and then I was, I was in a lot of his film productions and I learned so much from, you know, how to edit, how to color correct, you name it, how to light stuff. Wow. Those years that I spent with him after that, before he moved to LA after, you know, graduating from American Film Institute, he went over there and he got his master's degree in that. Okay. One time here at CCS college, you know, and he got his bachelor's degree. But uh, uh, anyway, how I got into that circle, even though I was older, is I had one thing hmm. that he liked, and that was the uh, uh, martial arts ability. He thought that was cool because he liked that kind of a film. You know, he liked that uh, Quentin Tarantino stuff. So hang on. So did he write Jimmy Six? He wrote Jimmy Six. Oh, he wrote that. Okay. He wrote it off knowing me. That's why I was saying that he would write about what he knows about. So a lot of, a lot of the, the productions that he would write and then put me in or somebody else in was kind of like about them anyway. It was, there was a lot of, he, he listened a lot about and observed you. He observed all of his friends and he would write the screen, different screenplays and it was all about them. Interesting. You know? And then he'd put them in it and he, and he knew they could do it because all, you, all they had to do is be who they are, be themselves. Sure, sure. That was his one of his secrets to get us local actors to look good because <laughs> he'd uh, he'd already know about you and he would give you a role that was based on that. So. Uh, so what he did with me. Was uh, he I got the, well, a film where he wanted some martial arts in it, so I did some martial arts in it, you know, and there was kicks and spin kicks and all that. And. Uh, it's just a silly, goofy movie, fighting zombies or something, you know. 
kicking them, kicking zombies around. Them. And, um, but then, um, you know, it got all of a sudden, then he wrote this, he just told me, he says, look, I got this screenplay and it's all about Russian martial arts and Sistema. Oh, cool. And he says, and I wrote this. So he, it's all because of me. I mean, he didn't know about this before that. So um, through knowing me, he wrote that screenplay. Now, remember, it didn't, it wasn't a martial, it's not a martial arts film. He, he did, he, he created a whole story and there's maybe mar a few martial arts parts in it just to establish the guy, who mm -hmm. the guy, who the character was in the film. So maybe there was a big fight at the end, but the rest is a big, is a story that, that that's just a drama. Oh, it's more of a drama than an action right. slash martial arts movie. But there's going to be at the end. Interesting. And, uh, and, uh, and, and he wrote it about that this character uh, was patterned off me first. You know, he's, you know, some guy, some, and I wasn't in the military or nothing like that, but it was something like that to where now the guy is a civilian now and he's got these abilities. Mm. So my role in it, wasn't that I would be in the movie, which I thought, oh, I'm going to be in this, you know. <laughs> sure, I'll just play myself. <laughs> that doesn't the way it works. You need a bankable name. Mm. So, so when when Rick Rosenthal, because he sold it to Rick Rosenthal. Oh, Rick so he sold the screenplay. Yes, he sold the screenplay so he can get it made. Yeah, yeah, sure. So Rick Rosenthal is the director of the first Bad Boys with Sean Penn. That's Rick, a huge movie. Yeah, and also Halloween, uh, the Resurrection, second one, and uh, Rick Rosenthal. And I don't know if he did some TV shows or Friends or something like that, but these guys are at the garage where I'm training at. That's Dan, fine. Dan Casey called me up and said, I got this secret or something I had to talk to you about. <laughs> then he comes over and he's whispering <laughs> you know, to me about something, and I'm not getting it. I don't get what he's talking about because he's whispering too quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so then... Um, he uh, said, just be around at, at, on Sunday at 10.30 a.m. I go, but I'm really going to be partying, partying uh, after this, you know, Wesley Snipes movie the night before on a Saturday. Sure. Like, Halloween parties and everything, you know. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll try to make it. I'll try to be all right at 10.30 a.m. And uh, so I, uh, I started teaching. I, I brought a couple guys there and I was teaching them. And uh, sure enough, there's a knock on the door. I open the door and this whole crew from LA comes in, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm um, just, and there's, they come in there and there's um, Rick Rosenthal and they're just doing their due diligence because they want to make this movie. So they're, they got to meet me sure. and they got to go and look at locations and do all that stuff. Right. And uh, just kind of go all over it. And so, um, so that, so what they asked me, so uh, is, because Dan said that I know the filming or how something like this would be filmed too, so that they can ask me that, like, what what would I think that your style, Sistema, how would you film this? Hmm. Would it be like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, you know? I get the wire workout. <laughs> and I said, I said no, but it would be like Taken or Born Identity. Okay. I said that's that's the style. So I was telling him that that would be the style. Hmm. And he would say to me, you know. How long would it take you to, let's say, train Jason Statham to move like you? I thought, what? I thought me. <laughs> I thought I was. <laughs> like, <where are> <laughs> oh, teach him. I thought I was going to be the Statham. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be. <laughs> you know? So, no, that's a big name, though, dude. Obviously, a big studio Hollywood film with Statham. They were cool. talking, yeah, probably $10 million or something like that. Yeah. You said Statham. I know you told me Statham or possibly Nicolas Cage, right? Great like, actor. That'd be cool either way, man. I couldn't believe I was really hearing that. You know? No, that's that's nuts, dude. They were that's a real movie. <laughs> and they were saying it so nonchalant. You know? Yeah. Said, Wait, is this a joke? Yeah. You know? So they wanted to use me as a consultant. Mm -hmm. And um, and then actually actually make an appearance like a cameo at the end. Oh, that's cool. Like they asked me to do, uh, they said, can you choreograph a 20-man fight scene? Wow. But have it end like really quick. Oh, really? And, and, and I said, that's not even a challenge. That's easy. I said, <laughs> I said that's less work. That's true. Said, that would be less work. And that's what systemas used for. 
if you if you make it last, that's hard. Mm. It's hard to come up with what would you do if I did that, and what would you do if I did this and this and this. But if you tell me all I got to do is take this guy out, this guy, this guy, and that's the job. Well, that's that makes my job easier hearing that. Real so, quick, real quick, how long would it take you to teach Jason Statham? Obviously, he's got a martial arts background already. I well, that I couldn't answer, but they they were asking, and they said what three months, two months, you know? Okay, okay. And I think I just got, I don't know, you know, I, I, it would I, be cool. Him training at your garage though. <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic training any place, you know? Yeah. And, um, and, uh, but you know, what happened there was our film incentive here got crushed because the change in governors mm. ended all that. How so, how so like tax incentives or something or what? They shut it all down and a lot of people invested in the movie business around here and even put millions of dollars, got all shut down just like that. And so Hollywood had a very bad taste in the mouth after that because they all had to go home. So the go- governor was involved with doing the new your- governor, Rick Snyder. Like, why would he do that? That's so much money for the city. No, for the I city. don't. Here's the thing. There was some. Uh, our governor, Granholm, that's who we had. I don't know if you know. She Now she's a um, senator someplace. Oh really? Over in over in uh, California, she's something, in, or I don't know, but she was all for it, you know. And uh, somebody didn't like that whole idea. Of it made to me, it made a lot of sense because they were making movies in Canada about Detroit. So it's like, hey, in Detroit, <laughs> in Detroit. So it yeah. just made common sense that if we had an incentive to keep them here, that we could keep the money here. And, um, you know, they said, well, it didn't work out. It was too much money. We had a post-production uh, rebate of like 39% or something like that. And um, they said, well, they were just taking advantage of us or they weren't using our crew or people. There had to be something that was more structured a little bit more. So they use our people, you know, for the crew rather than bring all their people here. And uh, that's what they were doing, like keeping us out of the job. But, you know, we, we only had experts. We could be experts or something. You know? Okay. And, uh, but it was just starting out, you know, and there could have been a lot of those changes if it would have continued, but uh, they didn't even give it a chance to grow. Wow. They just uh, killed it entirely. Yeah. We had Clint Eastwood over here making movies around the corner. We had uh, wow. uh, uh, Drew Barrymore and I met all of them, Drew Barrymore and... Um, so this Jimmy Six, though, this could have um, still got filmed somewhere else, though, right? Like, even if it took place in Detroit, they could still shoot it in Canada, right? Yeah, they could. But, you know, them guys just go on to the next thing sometimes. And, and they probably got so many projects they're looking at, right? They have, they have like a, you know, like the, when you buy a screenplay, you know, you got it for like a certain amount of time and then you, then you get then it. Oh, so they optioned it then, if, the I, I think, it. if they had it for a certain time, they sure. Optioned to a certain time, and then after that, it was, uh, if, if uh, nothing happens with it, they lose, lose the option, and they don't redo it. They just go on to something else. Do you know if Dan Casey still owns the rights to it then? Can he option it yeah. or sell it to somebody else again? Oh, sure. Really? Interesting. So it still could technically get made someday. But it could technically get made, sure. Okay. And But, you know, that was an interesting thing there, you know, and and then I would get beat up also, like if I did the choreography, you know what I mean? I'd be one of the bar guys out of the 20th, you know. To, sure. To why, yeah, why not, man? I stayed them or somebody else. But that would have been, uh, that came so close to, you know, happening. And then that happened, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's disappointing because that's a cool opportunity, man, to be involved in like a bigger Hollywood production, say what oh, you yeah. stay them and then doing the fight choreography. And yeah. that would have, have been cool, man. But they used to, they came in, and when you see the video there, I have a lot of it, it's just um, audio, be, I mean, it's just video because there was a lot of private questions I didn't want, you know, about the about the film and stuff like that, and this confidential. Okay. You know, or, uh, on the film. But I mean, he asked me questions like, you know, how does this relate to the UFC kind of stuff, you know? Sure, sure. And, uh, the, the, your teacher and people like that, what? what is it how does this rate up there in terms of uh you know effective martial art or a devastating kind of a thing you know you know you know what's interesting so movies always kind of introduce like a new martial art right like you had kenpo karate with jeff speakman in the perfect weapon brazilian capoeira with only the strong 
you had enough with Jennifer Lopez for Krav Maga. I but remember that was when that was getting real big. So this it, could have been really cool, man. It could have been. Then you had a keto too. You know, oh, Steven let's Seagal. not forget Steven Seagal. Yeah, yeah of let's not course. That. And then, <laughs> and then uh, Kung Fu with Bruce Lee. Yeah. So it's always cool how movies kind of introduce this new yeah. style, you know. So this could have been the one for Sistema. This could, yeah, th that this could, really could have been the one for Sistema, yeah. And then we would have had, you know, we would have brought, you know, uh, we would have had behind the scenes. We were talking about, you know, bringing in real, you know, who are the guys behind this, behind the real stuff? Oh, you mean have like Rabco and stuff in it? Oh, we'd have people like that. Yeah. Wow. You know, as a, you know, extra features, <laughs> you know, like a DVD. No, that would be really cool. Here's yeah. a question. Um, like, how did you get uh, inducted into the Russian Martial Arts Hall of Fame? You're, you're, because I've seen your certificate before. Yep. Like, is that through Sistema or is that through something else? Like, how do you get that? Well, that was Sistema. Really? Yeah, that was under, uh, that was, uh, what that was, was um, Vladimir Vasilyev's organization okay. and, Rebco, and Rebco's organization. So when they started that organization, um, that's when, um, you know, they, uh, and then they had, you know, flyers and things like that. And, you know, uh, seminars all over the place. And uh, in 2002, uh, was, there's a lot of people on the board of directors too, because that's a long time ago. I got that in 2002 and um, by surprise, it was a total surprise, you know, to me. I didn't know that that's cool though, man. But that adds legitimacy to the, the, the fight yeah. court for on Jimmy six. Yeah, I didn't martial arts hall of famer Pogosic. for the demonstration of and teaching of that's cool man to demonstrate it says the yeah it's, it's uh for the demonstration and teaching of and but now that organization's dissolved hmm. it had a federation that's what it was but they dissolved that federation so but um you know i was doing a lot at the time really doing a lot uh in the organization you know, going all over the, uh, being the assistant instructor in the United States, all over the States. Okay. So you were kind of spreading it anyway, but I mean, if you think about it, all the different seminars, you know, yeah. No, I mean, and, and that's the cool thing. Whenever they introduce like a newer martial art, um, you know, to the masses through a movie, like a real Hollywood movie, right? Not like a small yep. straight to video movie, but like a real Hollywood movie. Right. I mean, cause like I mentioned when that Jennifer Lopez enough movie came out, not that she's like the great crowd practitioner. She just happened to be in the movie to learn it. But um, you started seeing schools pop up everywhere. Like I even got involved. Right. And then, so I think Sistema would be kind of cool to people if they saw a really cool character, say a Liam Neeson type and doing this, they're like, let me look more into this, you know? So even though you're already kind of like spreading it, if you think about it with seminars and teachings, even the teachings you do locally where you're at now, like a movie really makes it like, you know, re really spreads it right with, with Aikido right. and Seagal or, or things like that. But it was, it'd be really like, you know, the assassin, you know, the assassin martial art, you know, like that's how you think of it. You're not thinking about it as um, like the UFC or boxing or sport or anything like that. Sistema would be featured as, you know, like this assassin martial art. It's like the, it's like the Russian ninjutsu. Right? No, <laughs> that's Russian, cool for that purpose. Russian, you know, it, it, it makes sense. Yeah. Or special agent, you know, or uh, something like exclusive, something really high level and really exclusive. That's, that's, that's how you feature it in the movie, mm. you know, where it takes over, it takes out everything else. Yeah. Yeah, you know. so you don't introduce it like the karate kid. If the kids get bullied in high school, you go to them on people, you're going to end up in prison, right? Yeah. No, that, that would be, the, yeah, that wouldn't be the thing. That wouldn't be how you do it. You'd have to have it like a uh, secret agent, special agent, you know, special ops, special, you know, assassin or something or the bad guy, you know? Yeah. Hey, I want everybody watching this video to comment if you want to see this movie made. If you want to see Sistema featured in a real Hollywood movie, comment below. Yeah. I mean, I'm curious. I want to see it. Yeah. You got to get these comments, man. See see what kind of demand there is for this thing. Well, I, I remember even on the on the set with uh, Peter Malota, you know, we were talking about different ways to use knives, uh, different situations. Because Sistema is so situational based, that's what it is. It's not technique based, but it's situation. 
what do you do if you're here and you're in an elevator and there's two guys, three guys, whatever you think of, there's like an answer to it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and, and then when you start thinking like that, that's when you start thinking movies, why it would be so good in the movie. Like we have one um, move where if you're in a car, you know, and somebody puts a knife here and you're like this, you didn't know they were in the back seat. So they do that, right? So you go like this, which, which traps their arm. So they can't, they can't slice you. Mm. Because by raising your arm up, they can't pull it. So now they can't slice you. So then you can use your hand to flip the blade straight up. Okay. By the flat of the blade, like this. Then you take this and jam it into the ceiling. Then you hit this so the handle comes out. And then you drag it, cut right through their hand. Now, that's pretty good, man. Now, like think, it reminds uh, me of a similar technique that we have in Krav Maga because instructor will even use his vehicle like and you'll get in the driver's seat and there's a dude behind you with the gun to your head and the way you do the disarm like you make sure this gets behind the guy so he can't pull the gun back you know while you disarm with the other so it's interesting because most people in that situation not that you know at least you have a probability of getting out as opposed to just like oh I'm so screwed <laughs> you know but, but I mean what I'm saying is do you see the drama that it, that would have in a situation? In a it movie? would be cool in a movie. Yeah, the drama, the conflict, the tension in that scenario. Oh, then it's just how like he gets, how he gets out. And then not only does he get out, but people would analyze it and be like, "Wait, this shit could be real. I could really use this." You know, but like people could study the movie. But that would be like how you see how you'd expect James Bond to get out of it. Yeah, but I'm be- saying people would be, you know, replicating yeah. that just like they used to do John Claude Van Damme kicks. Like I do that back in the day i still do that now but people would be replicating that I'll, I'll tell my wife hey uh get a butter knife behind me i want to try this movie i've seen out in jimmy six <laughs> you know 